Hello, good day, welcome back to NATS. What you're gonna be looking at today is a command tool that NATS gives you, and you can install it on any supported platform, and we can use that to do a number of things that we've seen already. For example, we can use it to publish messages, subscribe to messages, and send request reply messages. And we'll see that in a minute. So how do you install this wonderful tool? Well, you start by going to the NAS.io website, then you click on documentation, and then on the left side, you see NAS tools, you click on NAS tools. And the first one there is the tool that's actually called NAS. Now I'm gonna assume that you're gonna pause this video and install the NAS tool if you don't have it installed already. And then once you have that installed, then you'll come back. So assuming that you have the tool installed, now think back to when we publish a message from code. If we send a message to a subject and there are no clients who have subscribed for that message, then that's not really an error, right? Um, we simply just return. And so here we're gonna use the NAT publish um, subcommand, the NAT tool with the publish subcommand to send a message to the intros subject and we're going to send a message, hello, that's it, simple. Notice how it returns immediately, tells us how many bytes were sent. And we can keep doing this over and over. Again, there are no subscribers. If you look at the help for the publish subcommand, you'll see that we can pass some options like the number of messages we want to send, so a count. And this is great because if you want to do some testing, you can just Put a count and say how many messages should be sent and it also use goal template um, to allow you to sort of customize the messages a little bit and so those are some of the things that you can use as variables like the time timestamp random id etc so here we're going to use the count argument and send 10,000 messages now this is more than enough um, this is plenty but we'll you know, start off here. And we'll also put in our message the count of that message. So it start from zero. So the first message is going to be zero. Of course, we don't see that here, but in a second, we'll see it when we do is subscribe. But the messages went by too fast. So why don't we put a delay of half a second between messages? And so now we have a publisher that is sending 10,000 messages to the subject intros, half a second between messages or 500 milliseconds, and then each message is hello from foo, that's message and some number. Okay, so let's subscribe to the intros subject and see what we get. So if we were to just type that and press enter, you'll see that how, because we are subscribed, we'll be getting um, those messages. And we're up to message number 70 something okay now of course we can do this multiple times so if we start another subscriber um we can get the same message remember this is a we call a fan out pattern which meaning that uh, one message was sent and then it was delivered to multiple receivers and so um this is where you can send the same message have it copied to as many interested parties as possible now, one of the things that we looked at in the last video is how we can group our clients, right, the subscribers. So we can say that oh, they have a queue subscription instead of just a regular subscription. And in this case, we can say that oh, this first client is in the queue group called zip that one. And we'll put the second client in the exact same queue group. And now you can see that the messages are being load balanced between these two clients. And of course, we can add the third client to this group also. When the third client was by itself, it was getting all the messages. But now it's going to help with the work in um, by load balancing now the messages um, that are being sent between these three clients. So that's how easy it is. But notice, all this we did from code using the NAT Go client, but just showing you how the NAT command line tool 
allow you to do some of this and you can still write code for either sending or receiving to these to the subject and it will show up the same way so i'm just showing here that how you can stop the clients you can start them back and the message is start is going to continue to be load balanced and if you don't have enough clients well then of course you know the one client that is there is going to handle all the messages so let's now look at request reply message so when we think about request reply messages if we send a message that says request we're saying that i want a reply to this request if there are no subscriber or there's no one to reply to your request what happens well we see there are no responders and we can see this if we type not request and we send our request to the to the subject let's send a request to intros basically we're saying we want a response from someone on the subject intros and maybe the message we're going to send is just full and notice how we have no responders are available this is exactly what we got in code so in order for us to get a response or a reply to our request we should have someone willing to send a reply so why don't we start up some client that will act as repliers so <laughs> we can do not that reply on this subject which is intros and we'll put a message so what should our message be Let's just start out by something simple with something simple that says got your request and notice the replier is waiting because nobody has made any requests yet so it can't do anything and so you can think of this in a weird way of like a publisher right it's just waiting to publish except the publisher would keep trying to send whereas here we're just simply waiting to send until there's someone who can reply because there's no point in sending a message if there's no one to respond to it and as you can see when we do a request now now we can see that how we're getting our reply. Now we know that how we can do things like add a count and different commands for different arguments. So why don't we say that how we want to make a hundred requests? And you can see how fast that went by. There's no way for us to throttle how fast our requests are sent. Like you can put a delay between the request, but at least we can see it how we were able to send a 100 requests very quickly and up at the top you can see our reply shows that how the number of messages have increased right you can see 200 201 and so on let's make our reply messages a little bit more interesting remember we can use go templating to make our messages a bit more dynamic by using things like the count the time and so on so why don't we say we got your reply and this reply is reply number whatever using the count. And so now you'll see that how when we send a hundred messages, it went by very quickly. But now when we send a single request, we got um, the reply and you can see the number that there is increasing. Now I said this before, but the very first message or at least the CLI tool, when it do using count, count start from zero so if you were to use if we were to start this up and set count in our message or the value there would be zero then the second request or whatever or the second message would have the value one and so on and so on so let's do something a little bit more interesting let's make a simple service let's call it a http service if you like but it's not really running out http it's actually a service that's going to run on NAS, right but let's call it the time of day service so going to listen on the subject called time of day in this case and when time of day request comes in we reply with the time of day and the number of messages that we have or number of requests we have responded to so far and of course we have to send our request to the correct subject so this is going to be time of day and we don't need to provide any information as input we don't need to actually send any data and you can see, oh, made a mistake there. Um, so for our reply, or you know, which is going to pretend to be our service, we need a second um, curly braces after time. So let's fix that. And let's run it again. And this time, let's send our request. And you can see, once again, 
our first one just now was zero we cleaned up we send the second one it's now one and of course we can still send many requests using you know count now if your count is greater than 20 it just shows you um, a progress bar but if it's less than 20 or less then you see each individual um, reply message okay or request the response message for your request all right so now we've demonstrated how to use the NAT CLI tool to do publish subscribe messages and request reply messages so that's all for the request response messages and request reply messages and using counts and so on we can use the NAT CLI tool to do many things including managing accounts creating accounts uh, we're going to use it to manage our streams when we start talking about streams but we're not going to look into any of those other things now that we can do with the CLI tool we'll just cut it here so if you reach this part of the video and you like what you see and you are not a subscriber please consider subscribing i would love to have you as a subscriber and um, for those who are already subscribed thank you yeah i appreciate your patience and your time and thanks for coming back and everyone else if you watch this video please give it a thumbs up um, leave a comment just say what you think and what you'd like to see all right take care stay safe bye